Greetings. It is the ninth. This devotion is for the 19th of January, and our reading comes from Acts chapter 5 in verses 1 through 11. But an, a man named Ananias, with the consent of his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property. And with his wife's knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Ananias Peter asked, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, were not the proceeds at your disposal? How is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You did not lie to us, but to God. Now, when Ananias heard these words, he fell down and died, and great fear seized all who heard it. The young men came and wrapped up his body, then carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, tell me whether you and your husband sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to the test? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and died. When the young men came in and they found her dead, so they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear seized the whole church and all who heard of these things. Quite a piece of scripture, isn't it? <clears throat> now, it, it, just to put this in context, just before this part of scripture, it is explained that it, in the early Christian church was much, very much a communal kind of church. Everybody kind of sold everything they had, put it into the pot. For, for the common good. That, and, and so that, that was the context. And then we have this story, and I put this in story realm here, okay? Don't take this quite literally, but um, they, they were being deceitful. Now, I think the point, the key line here is at the end of verse 4. You did not lie to us, but to God. That's the key. In the end, when we harm others, we are in essence harming God. You've heard me say often that when we look at others, we need to see the face of God. So they were lying. They were they were being deceitful. They, there was a bunch of things in this process. And in doing all of those things, they harmed their relationship with God. Now, in the end, of course, the, the early church survived these things. So in the end, they weren't really... Uh, Maybe in the short term, they harmed the church, but that really wasn't the key, right? In the long haul, it didn't harm the church. We're still here, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Symbolically, the church survived. Symbolically, again, I, I believe this to be story to tell, make a point, but the couple didn't. We always harm our relationship with God when we harm another of God's children. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly God, it is sometimes very difficult to see all people as your children. Sometimes, dear God, we know that not all of your children behave in a way that is helpful. But we pray, dear God, that we still see them as yours. 
Help us, dear God, to abound in love, abound in caring, abound in, <clears throat> in thanksgiving to you. That as we work with each other, we can indeed see your face in everybody we see. Heavenly God, it is an amazing thing going on in our capital right now. It is a very hard thing to watch the fences and the checkpoints and the soldiers in a city that should be open. Dear Lord, Heavenly God, we pray that the proceeds of this week are safe and peaceful. We pray that no one comes to harm, dear God, and that together we may all find a way to move forward. Heavenly God, <clears throat> we pray that <clears throat> you would help us through this pandemic. Get a vaccine to all who want and need it. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. And dear God, fill the hospitals and homes with the healing power of your spirit for those who are suffering from this pandemic, from this virus. And dear God, as always, we pray for safety and care for those on the front line. It is through our Lord and Savior that we pray. Amen.